Hey everyone, I had a massive haul recently and I think out of all of my haul, I was most excited for this product that I have on today and that is the new edition of the Carly Bible BH Cosmetics palette. This is eyeshadows and highlighters. I was so excited to get this. It is so much bigger than the original. Here's her original. It is gigantic. Exactly the same packaging. This is so beautiful and it's so much prettier than the other one. <laughs> so this one has a ton of brilliantly colored shadows all in the very pink and peach range. I love it. There's a mix of mattes and satins. I'm going to swatch them for you. Then you have these two large sort of either um, highlighters or eyeshadows, however you want to use them. I used one as a highlighter today and one as an eyeshadow. And then you have these, which I guess basically you could use either way also, but they're really tend towards highlighters for your face because these two here especially are really, really bright and really metallic. And I guess they did, they carried the marbling over on the mirror section and they didn't on the old one. It's like stripes. You see that? The, here's a comparison of the colors. So there are, there is a similarity here, but this one is just brighter and I think more fun. It has more bright colors and just more fun colors. Highlighters look very similar. Some of them look very similar. As far as eyeshadows go, there are um, some that are really close in color, but then most of them are not even close. I think I'll show you, so I'll show you both of them side by side and you can decide if you want to get this new version. It's just so beautiful. There are some really pretty duo chromes in the new one. Let me swatch these glorious colors for you. I'm going to show you what I had on today. Beautiful, beautiful colors. There are no names to these really, so they're just kind of, you know, going across, whatever. For you, hard to see some of them in my hairy arm. This is the most gorgeous duochrome bubblegum pink to gold. Look at that. I have that on my lids. I had to put that on my lids. You know I did. Oh, beautiful. So look at this deep peach. That is another lid color I want to explore further. When I first looked at this palette today to, to do this, I didn't know where to start. I just really, I didn't. There's so many gloriously gorgeous colors. All right, swatching on. Look how pretty these two are together. Oh man. <laughs> look at these three together. That gold. Whoa, that icy purple, which I do have lining under here today. I want to do that on my lid. So I've got a bunch of lid colors. I want to do that one and I want to do that one. Sort of the sort of rusty colors up here. Look at these colors. They're so pretty. These are all consistently soft. The mattes are not dry. They're not chalky. The shimmers are not clumpy or gross. They're all smooth. I can't believe how inexpensive these palettes are um, for all of this product and for the quality that you get in the products. So let me show you the other, the remaining colors here, which are very highlighty. So my question would be, if you have the previous one, do you need this one? Do you need to like switch them out? Do you need both of them? I will tell you in a moment what I think about that. Those are some highlighty highlights right there. Oh my gosh, look at those. Then we'll get into the actual real highlights. I'm going to save the two best for the last. Here's these two really deep ones. These could be eyeshadows for me. I couldn't use them um, on my face. They're too dark. Okay, best for last are these last two highlighters. There's a white and there's a pink. Oh, wow, it's like a lavender. This one is going very lavender. You can see it at that angle really well. This one is just a really brilliant white. So what I did today, I started out with this sort of deep orange in the crease. This is, a, this is a matte color. And I wanted to bring my crease up really high because I wanted this orange to be peeking out at the top of my, of my crease. And I wanted to do a little bit of a deeper color in the very inside crease. And I wanted this orange to definitely be able to show at the top. Then for my lid, I did this gorgeous bubblegum pink with this gold shift. Oh, it is so pretty. That is the prettiest color in the palette. That's one of their duochromes in the palette. Got into my outer corner and also pulled into my very inner crease this sort of deep plum. 
Now what's odd about both of these BH Cosmetics palettes for Carly Bible is both of them, in both of them the deep plum matte is not as pigmented and dark as you would think. Looking at it in the pan, it kind of has, um, it kind of has a sheerness to it, a lightness to it. I would like it to have a little more impact. Uh, color that dark, I want it to be nice and dark on the eye. And I pulled that into my inner crease a little bit. Also darkened my inner crease with this color up here. Sort of going back and forth between the purple and that color and then this deep taupe here. Had to do a lot of blending there to get all three of those colors to lay just right on the inner crease. The very inner corner of my eye, I used this very light shimmery peach here. For my highlight, I took a little bit of this color right here, this big color and just dabbed it right here, right here at the arch, and that was it for the highlight. Then to line under my eyes, I used an angled brush and took that deep plum matte under my eye. I blended that really well so that it wasn't too dark or too harsh. And then I took the same brush, cleaned it off, and dipped into this gorgeous shimmering lilac. Brought that sort of midway and then all the way in. So I kind of almost have a double line going on there. For my highlighter today, I used, first of all, this sort of rose gold here on a wider fan brush to do a wider sort of background highlight because I, I double layer my highlights. I just love highlights so much. And then I had to go into this white just a tiny bit and do that just on the very um, point of my cheekbone. Intensely bright, shining highlighters in this palette, as in the last one. I love that. So I am really, really loving this palette. I love the shiny. I love the matte. I love the whole thing. I really like the colors in this one better than in the last one. Let me show you the last one, or the previous one, I guess. This one is 10 colors of eyeshadows with four colors of highlighters in it. Last time I used this, I was kind of disappointed in the lack of pigment of this color and this color, these two beautiful purples. I really wanted to get a very purple eye going on with them and they just didn't, they just didn't do it for me. I feel like some of these colors over here are a little dull, like these through here are just kind of boring. I like that this new one has more pink going on in the eyeshadow realm and less of sort of the just the tawny blah browns <laughs> that are in this one. So if you have the old one, do you need the new one? I think you do because yes, their colors, the colors can look a little similar between the two, but these two highlighters up here are just out there crazy. Um, let me look at this pink one in the old one and see. See, that one's just a dull neutral pink. It's nothing like this crazy white blue pink that's in the new one. Um, I feel like these two highlighters here are repeated sort of in the new one. Palette. I think you need this new one that has some really bright, this is gorgeous on, this is gorgeous on. All these lid colors I want to do with this one. I didn't find as many color combinations I was dying to do in the old one. So the new Cake and Bake Sponge. This is from Sephora. I picked it up on my Sephora haul and I have been using it. I used it today and I definitely like this, but I only like it for one thing. So it's a beautiful purple, beautiful, brilliant purple, and it has these really hard chiseled edges. It is a very, very smooth sponge. It has none of the um, sort of texture of any of my other sponges. It's smoother than real techniques. I mean, you can't even really look at it and see the little pores like you can in the real technique sponge. It is super, super smooth. Sorry, that's the Eco Tool sponge. Real techniques, same way. You can look at it and see actual little pores, but in this, it's really, really smooth. It feels kind of like a giant pink eraser that you had in school. It has that smooth of a texture. The, so applying foundation with this, I didn't really like it as much as some of my other sponges. I don't know what it is about it, but it seems to kind of push the product into my pores. And then you see my pores um, worse, especially on this one side of my face where my pores are pretty big. Um, pushing a liquid foundation into it, kind of, and not really stippling it like with a brush that has, or a, a, like with a sponge that has actual pores to it. I think that is better for a 
applying the foundation. I think the smoothness of it just seems to um, push the product into my pores. Now I do like it for my concealer. So I love this very sharp edge for my concealer because what I do for my concealer is I like to get and sort of, I sort of pull down on this side and I just sponge in like this and I get a nice sharp line going up under my eyeshadow and I get a nice way to get into the, my under eye area with that sharp line. I really like it for that. I've got other sponges I use for concealer. They're very small. I can kind of get up under there pretty well, but I like the sharp line on this. Also, it lets me avoid putting concealer on these two big creases that I have right here under my eye. If I can go around them with this edge, I don't put concealer in them and it doesn't emphasize those two big creases. I really like these sponges for concealer. I don't so much like it for my foundation. Stellar Beauty. This is a new product for me and I think it's a new line for Sephora as well. This is called Haze. It is a very, very light pink setting powder and it is very matte. Let me show you what I did with this today. I did sort of my under eye area only with this today because I was a little bit nervous about the pink cast to it. I thought, is it going to make my whole face look really pink or really white? I'm kind of nervous and I didn't know with it being stellar, I didn't know if it really does it have glitter in it. I didn't want to glitter up my whole face. So let me show you on the back of my hand how it is. It's a very matte powder. I think it did a great job for under my eyes, sort of like a bake. I think it is great for that. I think it's brightening because of the pale pink and the very whiteness of it. I do like to use a pretty white under eye powder. I usually use the um, Makeup Forever HD setting powder for under my eyes. This does have a tiny bit of a sparkle in it, but I think it worked out really well for under eye. I did end up putting it all over my face as my setting powder because once I saw under my eyes that it was not too pink, I thought, well, I'll go ahead and try it all over my face and it worked out. It does not look pink. It doesn't give me a pink cast, but it is very white and it is very matte. Don't think I'm gonna use this all over my face though because it is very matte. Uh, even though it has the shimmer in it, the background of it is very matte, and I don't really like a matte uh, foundation or face. I like it a little dewy. It's a very nice setting powder, though. It is very fine. It's not going in my lines, which is kind of unusual. A lot of setting powders go right in my lines. And finally, I have on a new product from Dior. These are the Lip Addict, the, the Dior Addict Lip Tattoos. So it comes in this really neat packaging that is matte looking. Look at that. So I have kind of some different feelings about this one. Um, the color I have on is number 491 Natural Rosewood. This was the prettiest, I thought, out of the bunch. They have, of course, a bunch of brights. And I thought this was the most natural looking and prettiest out of the bunch. It is not anything like the package color, is it? This is like a burgundy wine color. So when you put this on, it is a very thin, watery consistency. It says it's a long wear color tint. Now when you put this on, it went on very streaky to me. I did put on two coats. So you can see where it's darker on the inside here. That's probably like maybe some dead skin that I have or something. But really, can we always have perfect lips? I mean, we need something that's gonna go on and sort of ignore the dead skin part of our lips, I would think. And then it's gotten sheer right through here just while I'm wearing it for basically the video. I did put on a liner with it and the liner's holding up well. But what they mean by a lip tattoo is that you can put it on and it's not going to feel like you you have anything on your lips all day it's going to stay in place but it does feel very weightless and very it doesn't feel like I have anything on and it does not feel dry it is not a dry down matte type of thing it, let me put another layer on and show you how it goes on so when you pull this out of the tube the the applicator looks really really deep in color but then when you put it on it doesn't look quite so deep you see, it's not quite that deep. It is a very pretty rosewood color. It has a minty smell. Very gloss, uh, very wet, cold feeling. 
So obviously you can kind of build this. I'm doing that right now and it does take well to that. It dries after a little while. I just feel like it's inconsistent in the look on my lips. So I have on the way some of the new Urban Decay Basquiat artist collection. That's some artists that they hooked up with and I did think some of the palettes or one of the palettes and one of the lipsticks were quite attractive so I have those on the way and of course I'm still working my way through this haul for you guys I have so many more things so I'll see you next time thanks for watching